Hey guys, John here from Warrior Fitness. Today I want to talk to you about a very hotly debated topic among fitness professionals for the past couple years. And that topic is, should you squat with your toes turned out or must they remain parallel forward as if on railroad tracks? Now, to me, the answer is you should be able to do both. However, what you'll find is that there are very staunch um, proponents on both sides of the fence. And, you know, even going so far as to say, hey, you know what, if you aren't squatting with your feet parallel, then, then that's a dysfunction and we need to correct that. You know, we can't accommodate that movement pattern, we need to correct that and uh, we're not going to train you until you can fix that. Um, to me, that's kind of scary. And no disrespect intended to, to those fitness professionals who preach that. However, I don't think that you're seeing the bigger picture. And I think, in fact, you might be doing yourselves and your clients a disservice by saying that. First of all, turning the feet out is not a dysfunction, okay? Um, to me, a dysfunction would be knee not tracking over toes, you know, knee going inward, toes going outward. There's an issue, right? Or, you know, both turned, issue, turned inward. That's an issue because it's structurally unsound, okay? How then should one be able to squat? You should be able to squat both ways, okay? So with feet turned out, you should be able to squat. Heck, you should be able to go all the way down, ass to grass, right? Neutral spine, squat down, come back up. You should also be able to squat feet forward on railroad tracks and come back up. Now, if you lack the proper mobility, then that's an issue that needs to be corrected. But that's different from saying that it's a dysfunction, okay? Additionally, I think that if you only squat with feet forward, um, feet parallel, then you are setting yourself up for possible injury. Why? Because movement goes awry, okay? In real life, on the field of endeavor, on the field of battle, on the field of athletics, walking across the street, you know, having to move quickly suddenly, movement goes awry. It is not always perfect, okay? In fact, a lot of times it's not perfect. So if you teach yourself and your clients to only create this groove of flexibility and strength where the feet are forward, then if you suddenly need to move with feet turned out, you're lacking something. What you need to do is have the ability to squat in any position, any way, feet close, feet far, one foot forward, one foot backward. It shouldn't matter. You should have the balance, uh, structure, flexibility, and strength in all ranges of motion. You need to build a safety valve into your movement so that when, not if, movement goes awry, you are not subject to a catastrophic injury. Okay? That being said, let's look at both squats. Now, when you're talking about squatting with feet parallel, I think you also have to understand that there needs to be movement. In, in Chinese, it's called the qua but in this inguinal area where you have the femoral head um, coming into the hip socket. Now, when you squat, you have to be able to internally rotate or externally rotate that femoral head, that bone within the hip socket. And if you can't, or you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go back to an anatomy book and you need to look at how this bone comes into the hip and you also need to be able to feel and actually rotate that bone in the joint. So <clears throat> in order to squat, if I squat down with feet parallel, when I do this, my the femoral heads here, I'm using my hands to illustrate so you can see what's going on inside, but the, they turn, they rotate internally as I squat down and they rotate externally as I come up. So from here, and notice my knees are not turning in, okay? 
there should be no lateral translation of the knees. Again, that sets up injury. There should be no shearing forces on my knees. That sets up injury. Thus, I need to have mobility in here in order to correctly squat. Now, whether you squat by externally rotating, as you can see my hands are doing what the <clears throat> femoral heads are doing in the joint, or, and come up internally, or internally rotate and come up externally, doesn't matter. You gotta have that mobility. Additionally, you have to be able to externally rotate one, internally rotate the other, right? Externally rotate one, internally rotate the other. <clears throat> this gets into a lot of other applications for creating stability and creating power and movement, which we're not going to cover today. But <clears throat> I do think that you must have, so if I turn feet out, and, you know, I'm not going all the way out here, this is ballet, but 45 degrees, be able to squat easily, come back up, or feet straight forward, be able to squat easily, come back up. There's rotation and rotation. There's rotation and rotation. Okay, so the answer to should you squat with toes turned out or should you squat with feet parallel is yes. You should be able to do both. Okay, now whether you, and you should be able to do both under load. So whether you're doing a goblet squat, a back squat, a front squat, a searcher squat, whatever sandbag squat, I don't care, double front kettlebell squat, I don't care what it is, you should be able to do both, okay? So any questions, drop me a comment below, you disagree, love to discuss it, um, otherwise, go to warriorfitness.org, sign up for the mailing list, check out all the awesome blog posts, articles, videos, and any questions, let me know, John Haas, signing off, talk to you soon.